Hi, I'm Daniel Chan from UNSW Sydney. Welcome to another adventure in pure mathematics. Coherent sheaves and varieties can be thought of as generalizations of the notion of modules over a commutative ring to the case of varieties. And I want to illustrate this by giving you the classification of coherent sheaves on P1, uh, which is due to Grotendieck. And it nicely shows how the theory of finitely generated modules over the polynomial ring in one variable uh, extends into this projective setting. Okay, so let's go and look at that affine case first. So in this affine analog, uh, we'll just fix here an algebraically closed field K. And we look at the affine line over K. So suppose it's the Z line, so A1Z here. And we, if we consider any coherent sheaf on this affine variety, remember that just means you just have a finitely generated module uh, M over its coordinate ring K of Z here. And we know that in this case K of Z is a principal ideal domain, so the structure theory for such finitely generated modules is quite clear. Um, uh, any such module is a finite direct sum of cyclic modules, and you can be a bit more precise actually on how you write those cyclic modules. Okay, So we'll write it in this form here. This can be a free part here, so it's K of Z, uh, some number of copies of that, um, say for example perhaps R of them, uh, often we call this the rank of the uh, module R, and you can write all the other cyclic modules of this form, K of Z modulo some power of a linear uh, polynomial, okay, so K of Z over Z minus alpha 1 to the M1 and so forth down to what well, they could be S of them. And these alphas here, they're just elements of K, they don't have to be distinct, but there's a finite set of them. Okay, so we want to also interpret this uh, module geometrically. Okay, so this one here, uh, they actually correspond to vector bundles. I might talk about that in a later video. And just to remind you, what about these ones here? Okay, well, uh, when we look at the case where M1, these M's are equal to 1, okay, they correspond to the skyscraper sheaves. Okay, uh, but what happens when they're not equal to the skyscraper sheaves? Well, it turns out that, well, if you try to um, invert alpha 1 anyway, uh, for example here, or alpha um, i for the ith one here, if you uh, try to invert uh, z minus alpha i, since uh, z minus I, alpha i acts nil potently on this, you'll get zero. So it's going to be zero away from there. So what we'll get is that these uh, quotients here, they're going to be generalizations of skyscraper sheaves. Okay? Um, as a, we'll think of them as being zero away from the point uh, z equals alpha i. Okay, and at this point, it's going to be an infinitesimal thickening of uh, the skyscraper shape that you had here. Okay, so it'll be thickened by a factor of this mi here because there's a vector space, this is k to the mi like that. Okay, so we want to try to generalize each of the things in here uh, into the case of the projective line. Okay, and what we'll need to do most importantly is to generalize these uh, ideals down the bottom. Okay. And that's going to give us the notion of O minus MP. Okay. So the projective line we'll write as the union of the affine Z line and the affine Z inverse line. Okay. And um, we've got the analogues of these things here. They're the line bundles, which I've uh, talked about in a previous uh, video on coherent sheaves on the projective line. And so I want to have a look at these ones here now. Okay. So how do we do that? So firstly, uh, we've introduced the ideal sheaf O minus P for any point P inside P1. Okay, uh, and this is a subsheaf of uh, the structure sheaf O on P1. I'll drop the subscript P1 here and I'll just write it as O. And let's just remind ourselves what that is. So remember, that means that I have to tell you uh, what this uh, sheaf is on A1Z and A1Z inverse. And since they're subsheaves of O, I just need to say how it's a subsheaf of this sheaf O. Okay, so on A1Z, what is it? Well, O is just K of Z. It's the KZ module K of Z. And what is uh, this O minus P there? It's just going to be the functions which are zero at uh, P. So suppose P is given by the value of Z being equal to alpha, which is, let's just suppose it's non-zero for the moment. Okay. So P is going to correspond to alpha here. Okay, so if that's the case, then the functions that are zero at um, this uh, P corresponding to alpha, they're just multiples of Z minus alpha. So it's just the principal ideal generated by Z minus alpha. Okay, so that's what this shift O minus P is 
is on this A1Z. Okay. So what about on A1Z inverse? It's got to be a uh, KZ inverse submodule of KZ inverse because O on K um, on this A1Z inverse is just KZ inverse, and that's going to be the ideal generated by functions, which in this case are uh, zero at um, alpha. So that means that Z inverse has to equal alpha inverse. So this is just the ideal generated by Z inverse minus alpha inverse. Okay, and you can check that um, the the gluing data that you have for O restricts to a gluing data here. Okay, and that's pretty easy to see because basically when you um, uh, invert uh, Z here and invert uh, Z inverse here, these will turn out to be the same idea. Okay, so that's uh, O minus P. We've re recalled that. So that will correspond to basically one of these uh, factors here, linear factors here, and we want to take the mth power of these. In this setup so it turns out that just as you can multiply ideals together okay in a commutative ring you can uh, multiply ideal sheaves together as well and I'll do that just by illustrating this in a particular example okay so for m some positive integer I'm gonna uh, do that by o minus mp to be o minus p times itself so that where there are m copies of it okay so i minus p multiplied by itself so that there are m copies of it Okay, and that's going to be some subsheaf of O. Let's see how that actually works out to be. So, what is it on um, this A1Z? Well, on A1Z, O minus P, which is Z minus alpha. So, we just instead look at the ideal Z minus alpha to the M. Okay, so uh, or, or the principal ideal generated by Z minus alpha to the M. And M prime is just the ideal generated by Z inverse minus alpha inverse to the power of M. And you can tell that uh, you can show quite easily that this again is also a subsheaf of O, so it's an ideal sheaf uh, in that sense. Okay, and uh, so it looks a little bit different, but actually up to isomorphism, we've seen this before. Okay, in fact, I want to show you that this uh, O minus M P is isomorphic to this line bundle O minus M that I've introduced in a previous video. Okay, so let me show you how I'm going to do that. The proof is quite nice. Okay, and it helps you also understand um, some easy ways to work with coherent sheaves. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to produce a map from O minus M to O. Okay, and remember this O minus MP is a subsheaf of this. I'm going to show you that this is going to be a, a, an injective map whose image is O minus MP. And if I can do that, then I'm done. Okay, so let's see what we have to do here. So how do we construct a map from here to here? We need a map on the A1Z part, okay? So that's given, giving a homomorphism from KZ to KZ, and I'm just gonna multiply by Z minus alpha to the M. And it's clear that the image here is gonna be just O minus MP res, uh, restricted to A1Z, because that's given by the ideal Z minus alpha to the M, okay? On the A1Z inverse uh, patch, uh, that's got to be a homomorphism from KZ inverse to KZ inverse, okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply by this polynomial in Z inverse. It's going to be 1 minus alpha Z inverse to the M. And if you think about this, of course, uh, uh, the image of this will be just the principal ideal generated by this 1 minus alpha Z inverse to the M. And since uh, alpha is non-zero, okay, uh, of course, we can just uh, pull out by the unit uh, alpha to the m, okay, and you'll see that the image of this is also the, just the ideal generated by the z inverse minus alpha inverse to the m, okay. So certainly if this does define a homomorphism or a morphism of sheaves, if it does, we haven't checked that yet, then the image will certainly be O minus mp, and since these multiplication maps are injective, okay, it, turn, it, it means that this morphism is also injective, so we'll have uh, we'll have constructed our isomorphism from O minus M to O minus MP. Okay, so what's the last thing to do to check that this is indeed a morphism? Well, the fact that these two maps here agree on the intersection of those affine lines. Okay, so we localize uh, A1Z by inverting Z. So we're going to map from here KZZ inverse to KZZ inverse, which is given by multiplication by Z minus alpha to the M. And similarly over here, we're going to map from KZZ inverse uh, down to here. In this O minus M, we use the gluing data, and that's given by multiplication by Z to the M. Okay. For this O, 
What's the gluing data here? We just use equality or multiplication by z to the zero. Okay, that's another way to state that. So we need to show that this diagram commutes. It doesn't matter whether you go this way or you go this way. Okay, so go this way, since this is equality, it's just multiplication by z minus alpha to the m. If you go around this way, you're multiplying by z to the m first, and then this here. So you can multiply this z to the m by this, okay, and since you've got a factor of uh, power of m up the top there, Okay, that means that when you multiply throughout by z to the m, you'll get z minus alpha, all to the m, which is the same as this. So this diagram does commute, and this constructs for us our homomorphism, or homomorphism of sheaves from O minus m to O, which is injective, and whose image is O minus mp, thus proving this isomorphism here. Okay, so that's rather nice. Okay, um, so I did this argument when p is uh, corresponds to a point on this affine line a1z where z is not zero okay um, but you can also do this for p the point on here which is uh, where z is infinity or the point p equals zero the way you write it out is a little bit different okay but you can still do it in that case and this all still holds true okay so that's the first thing the second thing is that really we want to look at the quotient of kz the analogs of kz over this um, ideal here so we're going to look at instead O over O minus MP. So O minus MP is a subsheaf of O, so you can take the quotient. Remember, coherent sheaves form a, an abelian category. And I'm going to write this as OMP, because when M is equal to 1, remember that's my definition of the skyscraper sheaf, O subscript P. Okay. And what you want to think about here is that you want to think of this as, instead of just looking at a point, sort of like M uh, copies of that point, Okay, so it's like a weighted point where the weight is m here, which is uh, viewed as an infinitesimal thickening of that point. So I'm going to denote that by OMP. And one thing is that, um, so wh what can we say about this sheaf? Okay, we can say this sheaf is zero away from P. Okay, so that's something that's, so that means that uh, the picture that we have of this OMP is just like what we see here. It's going to be zero away from P. And the argument is just as what you see here, okay, except for you have to check on both patches, the A1Z patch and the A1Z inverse patch. Okay, so just to repeat, okay, if you want to see what this uh, sheaf looks like here, away from um, Z equals alpha, you have to invert Z minus alpha I, or Z minus alpha, okay. And when you invert that, since um, that Z minus alpha uh, I becomes a unit, and Z minus alpha I acts nil potently on this, that means it has to act um, by zero on the, uh, or rather this module has to be zero, okay, uh, in that localization. Okay, so this is uh, rather nice, and um, the way we describe it in algebraic geometry is that this sheaf, this OMP, is supported at this point. P, okay, it's going to be zero away from it. And now we can come to our classification of coherent sheaves on P1, which was proved by Grotentik, and it gives a beautiful generalization of this um, uh, structure theory for finitely generated KZ modules. Okay, so let me uh, state it now. Given any module M, which is a coherent sheaf on P1, it is isomorphic to a direct sum of things like what you see here. So, what are the things that you can have here? You can have line bundles OA. So whereas before you just had um, direct sums of copies of K of Z. Okay, so what are the analogs of things that are like this? Well, they're the line bundles. Okay, so they look like on A1Z, KZ, and A1Z inverse, KZ inverse. But unfortunately, you can glue them together in different ways so you get lots of different possibilities rather than just the one possibility you see here. Okay, so line bundle OA, so A can be any integer here. And the other possibility for what you can have are the analogs of these things here. Okay, they're the torsion sheaves of the form OMP. P can be any point on the projective line, and M can be any positive integer. And that's Groton Dick's theorem. And it's actually quite a non trivial sort of a theorem, uh, more complicated, quite a bit more complicated than what you see here. Okay, some of it boils down to what you see here. But there are some new phenomena that occur because of what happens with line bundles. Okay, so one of the things that, for example, you'll see is that um, uh, you may think that, well, everything should s split up nicely because um, if you're torsion free, for example, you get a direct sum of line bundles. But actually, you can have non split sequences 
of uh, um, direct sums of line bundles. And that means that you have to be quite careful when you try to prove this uh, theorem. I hope you enjoyed this adventure in pure mathematics.